this was the car that was uh, around when I was a kid that always struck fear into you uh, in, in when you saw it in the rear view mirror. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the vehicle we're featuring today, 1966 Dodge Coronet four-door police car. When I was in high school, you didn't want to see one of these in the rearview mirror. <laughs> yeah, this was, this was pretty much the police car of the 60s. Some had 440s, some had 383s, some had 318s. You know, there was always that thing when you're in high school, when you go to junkyards, you'd always try to find old police cars because as they said in the Blues Brothers, had the cop motor, had the cop brakes, had the cop transmission. You know, the police stuff was always perceived as being heavy duty, bigger radiators, you know, could take uh, more horsepower, could uh, hit them harder, bigger brakes, you know, the whole deal. And this one belongs to a gentleman, uh, well, if anything we like as much as old police cars, it's old police. Let's meet Fred Iverson. Fred, come on in here. You're a, a retired nice to meet you. deputy sheriff? Yes. Here yes. in Los Angeles, right? Yes, Los okay. Angeles County. Cool. How, how many years did you serve? Uh, 30. Oh, that's great. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Looks like you got out pretty unscathed, huh? Uh, until you see me walk off set. Oh, oh, well, <laughs> you know, yeah, he's doing okay. So tell me about this. Was this the car that was the vehicle of choice when you were a kid, when you just got out of the academy? What's the story on it? Well, when I got out of the academy, this is what they had in the back lot. So this is what we had to drive. So we had no choice. But they, they kept them two years. They should only kept one year because beat them pretty hard. Right. But after the two years, it was pretty tired. But it got the job done. And how many miles would a police car like this back in the day, well, a year? How many miles would you put on? I worked for a smaller police department back then, and we would do probably close to 100,000. Wow. And those were a hard 100,000. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, of course, it's so different than modern police cars because this just has looks like it has a two-way radio. No air conditioning, right? No four, electric. Four, 460 window. air. 460 air? What's that? Four windows down 60 oh, miles an hour. Oh, four windows down 60 miles an hour. Okay. All right. There you go. That's, yeah. See, these are the jokes you tell at the donut shop. Right. Much. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So pretty much, you don't have the shotgun. No. But that would have it had... Would, it would have been upright between the driver yeah, you and the you got a head. shotgun yeah. and a radio. No computer stuff. No, no computer. license plate reader. None no. of that, right? No, no. 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 Okay. And the log was, was handwritten, not like today. It was oh, all handwritten. Fit, so when you stop somebody, would you write down the license? Yeah, you'd, ha you'd have... Well, you'd have to uh, write the ticket in or whatever the call was. You'd have to say what happened right. or if you were booking somebody you would indicate that you went and booked them and their booking number wow okay so your first day at academy did you get one of these just like this yeah oh okay yeah. so what was that first night like did you take it out to see what you would do how did it work? well the first night i was uh, with my training officer and he was giving me all the forms we need a burglary reform a stolen car form and the dispatcher hollered down the hall says we had a call so we jumped in the car and it was my first dead body Wow. And I, okay. I didn't like dead bodies, but right. after that, I was okay with after it. That, but it yeah, in L.A., you get used to it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I guess in the summertime, it must have been pretty brutal. With it the heat. was, yeah. especially trying to write a ticket on that black hood with the engine running. Oh, right. Long, right. long sleeve shirt. It's oh. tough. Oh, okay. So when did air conditioning come in? About mid-70s? Yeah, there were uh, Buick, Monterey. Oh, you have Buick? Oh, no, I'm sorry, it was a, a Mercury. Mercury, Mer Mer Mercury, Mercury Marauder. Marauder. That's right. And it had AC, and we could actually roll the windows up, and it was nice. Yes. Now, yeah. did detectives get uh, air conditioning? And I think they did. Yeah, so think, yeah. the foot soldiers, you right. guys on the street, right. you just yeah. got the basic right. Right. four door. And this is probably what, a 318? I think it's barrel? a 318 with a two barrel. Okay, so it's not a high performance. No. So unless the guy was walking, you really couldn't chase him. Well, the... that's not true. <laughs> it, would, it, would, it would move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you ever get up some high, what, what was your fastest high-speed pursuit? Did you have a lot of those? Was that common back in the day? It wasn't uncommon, right, but it right. wasn't common. Yeah, yeah. And again, no disc brakes. Right? No disc brakes that you would, you would uh, go through brakes probably every 5,000 miles. And they probably had the metallic lining and a few other things I like guess, that, yeah. I think. Yeah, okay. Any power steering? Uh, this one does, but I can't remember if ours had it because this is a clone or a tribute car. Right, right. But I don't think we had it. 
Now, we did have bucket seats, though. This one has a bench seat, and right. we had buckets. Oh, okay. Well, mm -hmm. good. Yeah. look at that. Well, it was good. You put your nightstick between the bucket seat and the door. It fit real nice. Oh, okay. So how long ago did you decide to pursue this dream of finding that car that you drove that first night? I mean, did it really make an impression? Obviously, it did make an impression on you. I think I was trying to go home again. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, you really can't go home again. But I also made it as a tribute. There's a sign in the back seat. The, the department that I started out with uh, had five officers die in the line of duty. So I was putting it together partly to go home again, but also a tribute to the five officers. Oh, that that's gave their nice. Life. Well, that's very nice. That's very nice. And how long? Well, you said every two years you change cars. That's pretty cool. Well, they should have done it every year. But when there's budget problems, sometimes you can't. Right. So they would stretch it a year. But most departments, I think, change every year because they, they get beaten pretty hard. Do you have a damaged one? Yes. Yeah, wreck it? I mean, what? Uh, yeah, they had to pry me out of it. Oh, really? Wow. No, was that a pursuit thing? Or? Nope. Don't know. The guy came across the center line and hit his headlight to headlight for unknown reason. I don't know why he did it. Wow. Did he die? No. Oh, see, so but he did it deliberately? Had to because he just swerved right across two lanes of traffic, lined up headlight to headlight. And so boom. just trying to take out a police officer? I guess. Wow, okay. All right, and always four doors, never two yeah, doors. Yeah, because you can't, you can't book, you know, you can't get a, a prisoner back there in a yeah. two-door. Although they had, the Highway Patrol had that Mustang, remember? Right, right. That hot Mustang? Yeah, yeah. And they had to kind of squeeze them in with a shoehorn. Now, I noticed there's no divider. No, uh, they didn't have, at least the department I started with didn't have them in those days. And I don't think they invented them until later. Yeah, I mean, was that, did you, you must have guys kicking the seat. Well, yeah, they would, they would. Yeah, yeah. so you have to get back well, they, and just kind of. You know, Kind of deal with that. Okay. Uh, can we open the hood? Let's see what. Oh, you bet. Let's see what we got under the hood here. How long ago did you start this project? I think in 2008. Oh, oh, it's been a while. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty much as they were, huh? Is that an 18 or a 383? I, I think that's a 318. I think it's, it's basically the same block as I remember. It has the bigger alternator. Well, and then this is the siren here. Oh, okay, the siren <coughs> as well, yeah. I can't tell if that's the stock radiator or not. Um, first year of the dual master. I well, I had to add that. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, you for added. safety reasons. Was it a single master? Yes, it was. It? Oh, yes. okay, so it was not mandatory yet, okay. And here's that little card I was telling you about, the warranty card. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, I remember these. Yeah. Certified Chrysler. Okay. So do, the, do you take this to police meets? Do the guys get a kick out of seeing it? Uh, there's about three times a year I take it out. Uh, there's a, a parade in Hollywood that they let us take uh, antique police cars, and they actually let us use red lights and siren down Hollywood Boulevard, right? You, you're probably old enough to remember... Uh, uh, the guy from Highway Patrol, Broderick Crawford. Broderick Crawford. Yes. Well, how the town blocked us with that a kitty car couldn't get through here. Well, yeah, his right. star is between kind of between Grauman's and what used to be Kodak Theater. Right, right. So once a year on on ten four day, we go there with the police cars, park, block one lane of traffic. They go salute Broderick Crawford, and then we take off. Well, if you want to see a great episode of Highway Patrol, I don't know if, if you Google it or not, but you'll see a, like a nineteen year old Clint Eastwood. He plays a punk. Yes, I've seen it. Yeah, oh, okay, there you go. And he's just a kid. Yes. I mean, he's a kid, and I think, what did he have? I think he had something where he pulled a lever in the trunk open and logs came, came out the back, and then the, and the cops hit the logs and went all over the road trying wow. to catch this uh, crazy 19-year-old Clint Eastwood. Yeah, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Well, anyway, his star is right there kind yeah. of between Grauman's and I guess they call it Nokia now. Yeah, and I think he was pretty much a... Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, he was. He, he, yeah. got, a, he got a couple of... Uh, uh, Deuces. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I think they, I think cops will always pick him up and take him. Look, yeah, Roderick, yeah. go back home. Or you can't, yeah, yeah, one of those deals. Can't do that anymore either. Those, no. day, those days mm -hmm. are over. Those days are over. What are the twin solenoids? Somehow or another, one makes the siren. Oh, off, okay, gotcha. And then the second one is the brake, because okay. with these sirens, you have to have a brake on it, or the thing will run for like a minute oh, right. as it spools down, because this is a mechanical siren. Gotcha. So one is the siren spinning and the second one I think is the brake you hit a button it goes click 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 okay all right now what 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 would be in the trunk of the of a police car like this back in the day was there a first aid kit or I don't think we had first aid kits uh flares big box of flares oh you got a big box of flares um, spare tire yeah 
Oh, shotgun shells, extra shotgun shells. Oh, gotta shells. have extra shotgun yeah. shells. And a box of donuts, maybe, and that was about box it. Box of donuts. <laughs> Why would the shotgun shells be in the trunk? It seems extra, like to me. Extra, because you only had uh, enough oh. for the shotgun itself, so if something oh, okay. happened and you needed to reload, you might have a small, I think they came five to a box, the double out buck. Yeah. So you might have a couple of those there. Because I remember that all changed. There was that big shootout right down the street here. Do you remember this? About 20 years ago. What? Oh. The, the North Hollywood bank robbery. North Hollywood yes. bank robbery. These guys had, almost like the movie Heat, they had full body armor, they had machine guns, and the cops were running to local gun stores trying to That's borrow right. guns because all they had was That's right. basically six shots. And these guys are mowing people down. It was pretty crazy. I remember yeah, that was. time. And then from that point on, police uh, weaponry seemed to sort of increase pretty yeah, substantially. I, I retired a little bit... Uh, no, I was on duty that time, yeah. Let's take a look at the interior here. Basically, it's a pretty much a standard 60-sitch Dodge Coronet. Looks just like mine. Looks, mine's got the Hemi, but other than that, and these were probably around 2,600 bucks, something like yeah, that. Yeah, probably. Yeah. That, uh, equipment, well, yeah. these are cheap. They were in the day, anyway. Yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you think these, uh, they call these can lights. What do you think just two can lights on eBay cost if and when you can find them? Well, I, I don't know. I can't imagine. $1,300. Really? Wow. Just, just these two. Wow. Okay. Very good. Now, did you have other old cars too or just the police Yeah, I've, cars? I've got a couple. Okay. so Nothing, you're... nothing like this, obviously. No, but I mean, you've always been yeah, a, a car cars, guy and, yeah. and just to go back and, and, and relive the day. It's, it, yeah, it must be kind of fun. What was the most powerful police car you ever drove? Was it the one, one of these with a 440, do you think? I don't think we ever had a 440. No? Because I, I, I had a desk job after about six years. I went inside and did right. a lot of desk stuff. Okay. So I think maybe a 383. Now, I, I have a car now that's got a 440 and a highway patrol car, but it's an antique. Oh, okay. What year is that one? A 69. Oh, yeah. okay. You did a show on that a few years ago. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that was a fast. Well, the Roadrunner, uh, when that, that came out, <clears throat> well, in 68, that had the 383, 335 horsepower. And I think they've started to put those in the police cars as well. I like the dog dish hubcaps. Yeah. I, lo I love the basic look of the car. It's just a big sedan, could carry six people comfortably. Can we take it for a spin? You bet. Yeah, come on, let's go for a ride. Play with the siren and the lights? Play with the siren and the lights. Oh, that'll go over real big. Yeah. Well, we can play with them in here. Well, there you go. I always remember that starter motor noise. Christ, yeah, it's, it's you can always tell when a Chrysler right. is done. Same tires that the Cohen brothers had on, whatever oh, they okay. had. See if she's getting down. Not bad. They got the old Motorola radio. You know where that comes from? Uh, back east? No, no, but the name. No, I do not. The name comes from the two guys invented the car radio. And the most popular form of music was the Victrola. Remember right. The Victrola? I have one. Yeah. And so... It was supposed to be a Victrola on wheels, so it was Moto Roller. Oh, okay. Like rolling Victrola. That yeah. was that was sort of the idea behind the name. It's kind of like a motel came from uh, yeah. mo motor and hotel. Right, 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 exactly. Interesting. Yeah. I guess they still make police radios. Yeah. yeah. I think the first I think the first police radio was 1932, I think, the first Something like that. And that just revolutioned. Yeah, that just revolutionized. Because if you can outrun the cop, yeah, then exactly. you're, you're done. But you well, yeah, in the old days, they would broadcast the calls over AM radio, but the officer had no way of responding. The, the, the radio, local radio station would let, let them, if it was a hot call, say, Unit 57, go so and so. Calling all cars. But yeah. it, the officer had no way of responding back because he didn't have a real radio. Right, right. What's the fastest you ever got one of these old girls up to? 
You know, if, if it's a pursuit, you're so busy concentrating on stuff. I don't remember looking. For Probably a hundred. When did they finally institute that no chase policy? Because they always chased back in the day. Didn't they? Well, they still technically chase. I, you know, so yeah. I've been retired 20 years. Yeah. And I haven't worked patrol full time for. Uh, Probably 35 years. So yeah. I'm kind of old school. But you know, my day we could ram. They would let it, actually let us ram. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. So things were a lot different in the in the 60s. A lot less liability. Was it worse in the 60s than it is now, or? Well, there's more people looking to, to get you now, get you in trouble, yeah. find find fault with what you're doing. I mean, you find there are. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is. Is it more dangerous for the officer now? Did everybody have a gun back in the day, or was it not You know, so we didn't find all that many guns, and we found them. But the one thing, we didn't have bulletproof vests back then. So right. now, oh, okay. See, now they got the vest. Right. And as long as it's a handgun around, it's probably going to save your bacon. Right, right, right. So that, that's a big thing. And there's better training today. You know, we used to, on the end of a pursuit, we just walk up, and if the guy didn't get out, we'd pull him out the window. Yeah. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> no, they can't do that Matter of fact, wind wings are uh, kind of a thing of the past. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like them. Well, she bounces along, doesn't well, it? Well, yeah. it's string. It's got air shocks in the back. Oh, okay. I should, I should spend about 5000 on it if I wanted to. Well, see, it's got so much rust, it wouldn't be worth it. It feels pretty tight. Yeah, but Not bad. like you said, the springs are kind of yeah. squirrely. So it's, it's good for shows. It's hard to find anybody that'll arc springs anymore. You know, I had a pair arced about 10 years ago, and they, and they worked fine. And that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. People don't even know what it... What? They yeah. Know what I guess they have to heat them, don't they, first? And then yeah. they, they yeah. roll them or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because now you got carbon fiber springs. Yeah. So. so now they got, obviously, computers that can read a license. Oh, yeah. They, but in your day, you had to, what, call in the number, then wait for them to look it up in a file? Some, sometimes 10 minutes, and if you wanted to check a stolen car, both North and Southern California, they had to call Northern California. It was two, two numbers. Wow. And so if you thought maybe it was stolen up North and you wanted to check, that could take another 10 minutes. Wow. They, they literally got on a landline, called somebody in Northern California, and then they checked the computer up there. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was pretty tedious. Yeah, I guess the officer does everything here now. Yeah. Run, run, gun registrations, uh, everything. You work days or nights when you did patrol? A little bit of everything. You didn't yeah. even start on graveyard. Right, right. You know, a young guy, but yeah, mostly, mostly nice. Yeah, there's a lot of difference between day shift and, and graveyard shift is night and day. You know, yeah, different, yeah. Different things that happen. Like my mom said, nothing good happens after midnight. Yeah. Not usually. No. I've no. had a few good things happen after midnight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you walk away from accidents that would have killed you back in the day. Yes. Yeah. So. Well, the one I told you about where the guy came across the center line and he right. uh, had the seat belts on. If we hadn't had seat belts on, we'd both die. Because my partner almost hit the shotgun. His wow. head buried. I could never see it out of that corner of my eye. Shotgun was, and I thought he actually hit it, but he just missed it. Wow. I hit the steering wheel because we didn't have shoulder belts. Right, right. But without the seat belts, we'd have gone into the windshield. So did that guy go to jail for doing it You know, we all three of us rode in the same ambulance. They put me up front because I, I wasn't the worst. And the suspect and my partner were in the back. And once we got to the hospital, we went to different rooms. And I never heard, I guess they charged him. He yeah. wasn't drunk. They, they yeah. didn't, they couldn't test for marijuana back then. So yeah. he could have. But I think he, he was supposedly caught bragging that next weekend around town that he did it on purpose. Yeah. So maybe he did, I don't know. It's funny how it, the feel of something stays with you, like you said. You were what, 22, 23? Yeah, I think I was just time. barely 20. This is what I remember, this this checkerboard on the... Right, on the, right. Look, because this is where the training officer would drive. Right. Training officer. So I can remember looking at this and thinking, boy, did I make a mistake? You know, that first night was pretty hairy. Right, right. Well, Fred, thanks for this opportunity to drive this. You know, like I said, this was the car that was uh, around when I was a kid that always struck fear into you uh, in, in here when you saw it in the rearview mirror. So thanks for... Uh, Thanks for your my service. Privilege. This we is a high point of my life. Well, no, no. Well, <laughs> yeah, at my age. It's pretty dull it life if this is your high point. It is. At my but, age, this is a high point. But we appreciate your service, and uh, and thanks for preserving a piece of history. This kind of stuff is always a lot of fun. So. Yeah, well, you can borrow it anytime. Hey, thanks. Take uh, your wife out to dinner. Yeah, you. take her out to dinner with a police car. See you guys next week. Thanks, everybody.